for the first time for a friend Reyes. First time ever he's gonna say how much he's gonna charge for the big event. The owner just came and kicked us out. Today I'm going to show you how many headaches are in the DJ business and there's a lot. But to be fair, there is a lot of great money in it, but is the juice worth the squeeze? And I say that because there's a lot of equipment, it's heavy, long hours, and a huge investment. But why is Modesto still doing the DJ business even after 10 years? You'll find out in this video. And of course, if you like this video, press the like button. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss my next right along video on how to make money. And if you want to help me out, share this video to your friends and family who want to start a business so they could get some free 99 knowledge. So it takes 30. And guess what we're doing today? We're gonna give you some free 99 knowledge on the whole DJ entrepreneur game, you know, the DJ business. We're driving to Madeira. And what I'm trying to find out today is how much did this DJ entrepreneur invest into his whole setup? How hard is it to run a DJ business? And how much money did he make from one DJ gig? So let's go see. Hi, nice to meet you, Reyes. Hi, Reyes. What's up? Hey, guys. As I get there, I see like five guys, and I don't know who's the owner. So I introduce myself to everybody and find out it's Modesto. And the very first thing I like asking entrepreneurs is, what made you get started on your business? And this is what made Modesto start a DJ business back in the day. My brother-in-law, he used to live in LA mm -hmm. and he brought two small speakers. I still have them, they're right there in the corner. Yeah. Keep them as a good luck charm. Whenever we had a party, you know, they would ask me, Do you have any speakers? Do you have any CDs? You know, play some music, you know, stuff like that. I started, I started taking my two small speakers and <laughs> they didn't know how to use them, so at the end I had to, you know. Yeah, you had to do it uh, yourself. Take out my iPod. <laughs> <laughs> you, you were one of those DJs? You had your music in the iPod and then just plug it in? Yeah, just iPod plug in, go yeah. chill with the friends, you know. In the beginning, I probably started like $150 for five hours. And then people were willing to pay up to $200 just for two small speakers and music on the background. The point of this story is to always keep your eye out for opportunities. Now, let's go see how many events we have today. So, Modesto was just telling me that we have two events today. Today we got two, one big event and then one small event. But they're at the same time. They're going to be during the same day. And we're gonna try to work around the time to make sure everything <laughs> works out at the end. This is like a huge headache, man. Yeah, every like, Saturday is a headache. Yeah. We usually get a, from three to four events per day. You're gonna need a lot of trucks, big trailers. Wait, was this your first one? No, uh, actually, I don't have my first trailer, but it'll be kind of funny because it's a really messed up small trailer. Oh. I mean, that was on the backside. Yeah. It's a very messed up trailer. Uh, okay, let's say someone wants to get into a DJ. How much do you think they're gonna invest into the equipment to start DJing? Nowadays, uh, you might need minimum of maybe three thousand dollars. Yeah. Just to get started, just to get yourself some small speakers, a little bit of lighting, a good computer, a mixer. So here we have all our subwoofers. These metal parts is what we call the trussing, and these we use to either uh, hang speakers or hang lighting. Yeah, these are the stage, these are the platforms that will go on top of uh, these pieces right here. And then we have the ladder right here. So oh. Let me ask you something. How, how much do you think you got invested in all of this? I yeah, mean, we got like fifty to sixty thousand dollars of worth of equipment. Damn. But if we count the trucks and trailer and all that, then that adds up. Even more. oh, so that's not even including the trailers yeah. and the trucks. That just sounded like. Oh man, so it's expensive, but if DJing is worth it, because uh, how much are you charging for this event? Okay, we usually don't give our prices, we're gonna do it exclusively for you guys. Oh, uh, and the reason why I, I feel you you don't really like seeing your prices, because it's a lot of competition. Yes, there's a lot of competition. And everybody's trying to undercut everybody else, right? Yes, once they know your price, they'll try to undercut you. For the first time, for a friend race. First time ever, he's gonna say how much he's gonna charge for the big event. And how much is it, man? All right, so for these type of events, it usually goes around 2500 2500 Whoa, whoa, but before you click off the video and go spend your rent money on speakers and an iPod, 
Let me show you how many headaches Modesto has to go through for just one event. And then after you watch the whole video and you decide you want to go buy speakers and an iPod and everything else you need, I'm not even going to stop you. Let's put all the equipment in the truck. Let me show you how they set up for an event. So Modesto, the DJ guy, kind of just gave me a little tour of his storage and everything he has. And it seems like not only a huge investment, but it seems like a lot of work, man. Because everything's broken down. And it just seems like it's going to be a huge headache to put it out together. But I'm very excited to see how they do it. So they're still putting stuff in the truck. And then we're going to go to our first event. Now, here's a very valuable lesson that no one will ever teach you because you can only learn this through experience. So, Modesto, well, you were telling me that you had another potential business, a banda. They wanted equipment? Yeah, they wanted some equipment to match. And that could have been an extra $650, right? For the setup they wanted, $650. But why did you decline that order, Modesto? We had to decline the order for the business yeah. because we ran out of equipment today. Yeah. Enough, enough equipment for that event. We usually do, but since this setup is going to take most of the equipment, we're going to have to say no to that one. It hurts, but we're going to have to do it. That's one thing that all entrepreneurs learn that you have to know how much you could handle in a day. Because I'm sure you could say, yeah, but then you would have been running up and down and you would have been stressing about the equipment, right? Yes, stress comes into play when you take more work than you are able to do. So there's some free 99 knowledge, a free 99 tip. Don't take more work than you could handle. So I'm talking to the homie Modesto and I'm like, hey, have you ever had a mess up where speaker isn't working or something and you don't know what's going on? And the very first thing you said was, you said something happened last week. Yes. What happened? So last week we went to a wedding. So then I noticed that on one of my speakers, the high frequency speakers were not working. Yeah. Did the customer complain or did they even notice? Well, I got lucky because what happened that as soon as I turned on the sound, security came at me and told me, you need to lower your system because it's too loud. If the cops come, they're going to stop the whole event. Oh, like, oh okay. <laughs> so, oh, well, look, corner turn it down. You know what? I'll take out one speaker. <laughs> Does that happen a lot? Like little mess ups or where the speaker just, there's something going on and you don't know what's wrong. It happens a lot. And it happens to a lot of DJs, a lot of sound engineers. You think we're gonna have any issues today? You um, think all the equipment's ready to go? Right now, I feel like everything's gonna work out pretty good. But, all right, let's see how it goes today. And hopefully, you know, I'm gonna light my Virgin Mary candle to make sure we don't have no mess ups today. So, Modesto, yeah. you've been doing the DJ thing for a while. What has been one thing that you feel really gets you customers? All right, so there's many factors that bring in customers, mm -hmm. but the main one that has worked for me, and I try it every event to get more customers, is good customer service. Whenever we do an event, people always remember how you treat them, you make them laugh. Do they feel like you're a nice person? Uh, can they approach you? Do they feel comfortable? They don't feel awkward. And if they do feel good about you, then they're gonna recommend you to two, three, even six more. Uh, the reason I like that part of uh, how to get customers is because once we have been recommended by someone else that already gave a good word about us, then when we give those people our prices, they don't really uh, complain. So at every event, you give that good customer service, you're a professional, but you try building that relationship with your customers so they could like you, like your service, and recommend you to other people. So it's 348. They've been setting up for a cool minute. Let's go check it out real quick. So what are you doing now? Make sure everything's working, making sure when the band gets here and the other small band, we just go up there and start playing. So. It's 525, 
They're done setting up. They're done testing. And now the real party starts. So you see Modesto making great money. He has an established business. He has a great reputation, but guess what? He's not a full-time DJ, and this is why. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. How come you don't go full-time with the whole DJ thing? We only do this on the weekends right now, and we're thinking of going full-time. The only problem we're having is that most weddings, quinceañeras, parties, end up being um, either on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. So pretty much the only reason you're not going full time is because you feel there's not enough business throughout the week. During the week, exactly. Mm. Or else, I would definitely <laughs> go full time. Then that's hard though, huh? Like, yeah. how can you make money from DJing during the week? So Modesto, man, is about to be 11, busting over 12 hour shift. How are you feeling right now, man? We got like 30 minutes left. We'll start packing up and we should be done for the night. Well, what time do you think we're gonna be finished? I mean, like around 1. 1? 1.30. I mean, packing everything in? Yeah. Dang. Now, let me ask you. Is that a normal thing for a DJ? Those late nights, staying up late? Because you can't leave until the party's over, right? Yeah, we, we're the first ones to get here and we're the last ones to leave. Go show some love to Modesto at Plevy TV on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. If you want to learn more about the DJ business, I'll put their link in the description below. Go show them some love. If you are looking for a DJ in the Madera area, hit him up. Very good service, professional service. And I'll put that in the description below as well. Let's go finish this party, bro. So the funniest thing happened. The owner had told the party planners, hey, at 11.30, you guys gotta go. At 11.50, the party's still going, cause you know, we don't stop the party till the cops come or they kick us out. So he came to kick us out. And then he goes up to the band and tells them, hey, hey, you guys got a skedaddle. He goes, that's it, that's it. Look at the time, look at the time. <laughs> that guy over there, huh? And he means business. So then the main guy tells him, one more song. One more song. And the guy says, nah, you gotta cut it. And he goes, all right. And look, and look, they're about to end it. It's over. And then the guy, the, the party planner, says, hey, I guess it's time for us to go. The owner just came and kicked us out. <laughs> oh, man. It was a good time. It was a good time. And the party finally ended at midnight. They started packing up, and they didn't get to go home till 1.30 in the morning. I don't know, man. I don't think this business is for me. But now you know the headaches of running a DJ business, so now, Go ahead, go run, go get your speakers and iPod, and I'll see you in my next video.